Hello, this is Chris Ott, and this is part three of this series that I'm calling um, The Psychic Emergent Universe. And I, I think I've got um, this and another talk and to give and then a conclusion. And I almost skipped right to the conclusion um, and sort of summed things up. But there are a few things I want to cover that I haven't made clear before. And so uh, I'm going to cover some of those now. So this assumes that a person is familiar with um, my writing or um, these videos. I've done about 100 videos that uh, cover my philosophy. And it is a metaphysical point of view that the universe is of a psychic emergent nature. That means it's psychogenic. It's not intrinsically physical. We're going to talk about what, what we mean by that later. But, um, but, it, and, but the effect of the process that's psychogenic is things that we call physical, that are, have all the characteristics that we assign to what we mean by something being physical. Um, <clears throat> Permanence and mass and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That's the. But I um, and I've written two books, and the first one was the evolution of perception, and the cosmology of substance, a simpler theory of everything. That was the title. It was a short book, two thousand and four. It's out of print. Um, and then I did a second book, um, more recently, uh, in two thousand and. Um, 21 February was released on Amazon and it is called the evolution of perception re-explained because a lot of people had hard, some people really loved the first book really truly but some people just found it hard it was very terse and so uh, the second book is more is slower and more expanded and hopefully um, um, reaches um, it's better, easier to understand and also clarify some things. And even even I changed my mind about a few things. So I have those two books. They're both on the same topic, though, this basic idea. But there's a kind of a thing. I, I mentioned this in the second book. But in the, fir in the first book, I talk purely of perception. You know, it was called The Evolution of Perception. Now, I'm careful to um, clarify how I'm using the word. I'm using it in its traditional, original sense um, in English, which meant um, you can perceive anything, your dreams or anything. It doesn't have to be sense perception. It could be in what they call internal, you know, mental perception. That's still perception. It's an act of conscious experience, and uh, that was always called perception, as well as sense perception of physical objects, external objects, they call them, but also of internal you know, our internal states. So I mean it in its broad sense. The evolution of perception um, brought about the universe, the world. That's the meaning of the cosmology of substance. So if this is substantive, then I explain how it got that way. Now, in the second book, I, I went over that again, that there's an evolution of perception, and I also clarified what I meant by perception. I didn't mean it in the very uh, contemporary 20th century sense of just sense perception. That's, that's, and I talk a lot about how that happened, that the word got limited like that. But it's not how I'm using it, um, because we don't really have a substitute for the word perception in its classical sense. So I use it in its classical sense. So, um, but in that book, I went over uh, the this evolution of perception, starting with, in the beginning, there was perception. And uh, not something doing the perceiving, not a person or something, or a mind, living all that, just the perceiving itself, the verb. And um, so I described, but then, since I uh, wrote the first book, um, I, read, I read a book by Mayor Baba, who I've talked about a lot, and uh, it's called um, Infinite Intelligence. Um, and I did my own uh, edit from the original uh, manuscript. And it's online for free. It's um, 
just called the Intelligence Notebooks. It's based on the notebooks by Mir Baba that were discovered in 1969 after his death in India. And um, that, that manuscript um, affected my thinking, and I realized um, well, what I really mean is that there originally was this intelligence. Now, I want to clarify this seeming contradiction. Is it intelligence that was originally here that evolved? Or, well, it didn't evolve. It, intelligence was and remains intelligence. But perception, the, what I mean by evolving is how it is perceiving, which I've gone over and over and over and over. What I mean by that. For how you perceive, I use the analogy of a, of a lens. This is a lens I, I ordered online just to use as a prop. So I'll explain, you know, what I mean. But this is just an analogy. It's a physical object that I'm using for, to represent a concept of altering how you perceive. Okay, so that's what evolves. But intelligence is what really is basic. Now, this is, I would never have come up with this idea if, I, if it wasn't in the books of Mayor Baba. No philosopher ever had this idea. That, and I'm going to state what it is. Um, my idea is based on this central concept. This is Mayor Baba's central concept. Is that all there is is God. There isn't a God like we talk about. Like, is there a God? No, because the, even the word A sort of singles it out as a, as a discrete object, discrete from other things, you know. But there are no other things. There's only God. Now, what I don't mean is that everything you perceive is God, because that's called pantheism. The, this is different in that everything that you perceive is an illusion produced by these perceptual schemas or ways of perceiving. So I would say, now, what, what, what are these? If, if there's only God, what are these? And there's only God, so how can there be these? Because these are not things. There's there's a sort of a psychic dynamic. So if God is a psychic uh, dynamic of intelligence, or I don't know if I'd call that a dynamic, but it's a it is psyche itself, then as it imagines ways to perceive, we're just using this as an analogy for that way of perceiving. Okay. This isn't a something aside from the psychic uh, reality that's always was, always is, always will be. That infinite intelligence, which we call God. Same thing. Now, I want to say the relationship between perception and infinite intelligence. Because how can I have... Uh, I actually do it twice in my second book. I give the whole evolution as an evolution from just perception, but then I go back further to intelligence, and then it evolves, and uh, then perception begins to occur. So I want to, I want to um, clarify this, because it could be confusing. I haven't, um, if, I, if I covered this in the second book, I'm not, I can't remember what I said, but I, I know how I want to say it now. Let's look at the meaning of the word intelligence, because there are some things that are intrinsic to what we mean by intelligence. If we didn't include these things, it could never be intelligence. It's something else. Okay, so Wikipedia has been criticized, and I've defended it. I worked on Wikipedia for a long time, for about 10 years, when it was younger. And uh, there's a lot of criticism today, and tr truly, there are articles that are kind of um, warped, especially if they have a political nature, and there are people that are all divisive, and they go in and they sort of fight, and they try to get things to slant toward certain views. Um, the CIA has even been caught doing this, to try to get people, you know, shape people's perceptions about certain um, um, wars and so forth. Um, but... Articles like on per intelligence, something basic like that, it's fine. There are six million articles in Wikipedia, over six million, and you're never going to find anything else. You're, well, where else are you going to look for intelligence? Hey, it's going to have everybody's opinion. This is a group project um, by it's user edited, but it's very carefully done. I know all about how that's done. It's not uh, reckless. 
Um, so articles like this are very fairly reliable, and there's nothing controversial in this. It's just I'm just using the opening paragraph anyway. It's called the lead paragraph in a Wikipedia article. But intelligence has been defined in many ways. That's important. The, cap the capacity for abstraction, logic, understanding, self-awareness, learning, emotional knowledge, reasoning, planning, creativity, critical thinking, and problem solving. That's only the beginning of the paragraph. But it's got an important point, and that is that intelligence means certain capacities. Okay? When we say something's intelligent, we mean it, can, it is, has the capacity to do this and this and this, okay? Now, when I use the word perception, because there's only God, remember, and everything else is an illusion imagined by God, I really kind of mean imagination when I say perception. But it ends up being, because of the way I use the word perception in its broad, original, classical sense, um, from the Latin, which means to take, which means so we just mean to take experience of anything, including in, internally, like of our imagination. To be something that's intelligent has to have the capacity to imagine. If it can't imagine, it's not intelligent. Now, of course, to imagine, you have to have the capacity to be conscious, or at least to become conscious. Uh, if something didn't have the capacity to be conscious, we would never call it intelligent unless you were a rigorous materialist and you, you're just juggling words around. And they do that. They have, um, in, in machine functionalism, they have sort of machine definitions for things like perception and stuff like that. And they don't believe that people are conscious, which doesn't make any sense. But I've talked about this a lot. You can go back into my thoughts. So, um, so, Intelligence includes the capacity to perceive, to imagine, and of course, to imagine, you have to have the capacity to perceive what you imagine. If you couldn't perceive what you imagine, you couldn't even say that you imagined it. I don't even know what you would have meant. So, this infinite intelligence has this capacity to um, imagine, to perceive what it imagines, and so I... I, I wrote this out because this pretty much covers the theme. And this is from, from Mayor Baba's teaching. Um, I might have to cut a little of this out because I have a hard time. Whenever I use notes, it always slows me down. It doesn't help me. It really slows me down. Okay, so... Um, intelligence includes the capacity to become conscious. It, it could not become, if it could not become conscious, it could not be called intelligent. It has the capacity to imagine. Again, it could not be called intelligent if it couldn't imagine. That, that, that would mean that there could be no new discovery internally at all. How could that be intelligent? It's like, uh, you know, like you're just stuck. <laughs> I don't even know what that would mean. We can't imagine. And the capacity to perceive and be aware of what it imagines. Otherwise, it wouldn't be imagining at all, would it? And the capacity to become, uh, I said, um, may begin as slightly conscious, like in lower forms and evolution, and then it becomes more and more and more conscious until it becomes fully conscious as a human being. And it can take full experience of the imagination of the only um, perceiver, which is really God, because that's all there is. Um, and now the other thing is that... Um, Also, part of the a part of intelligence is the desire to know. Okay, um, if if there was um, no desire to know at all, you would never call that intelligent. That'd be an idiotic. That would be boorish stupidity. The desire to know is an intrinsic part of the nature of of what it is of what intelligence is. So if God, which is infinite intelligence, is all that exists, then knowing everything, since he's all that exists, means knowing itself. So this is the idea of God 
be, um, awakening, becoming increasingly conscious over evolution. That's what evolution actually is the, the, the byproduct of, this awakening. In order to know, but what is there to know? Since this infinite intelligence, which is God, is all that is, what is there to know? There is only itself to know. So this is the goal. That is the whole theme of Mir Baba. That you have unconscious divinity that wakes and becomes conscious divinity and realizes what? It realizes truth, it realizes itself. So, let me say all this again. So there is, so there is God with God's nature, which is include, um, which it, at its core includes the des the desire to know, the ability to become conscious, the ability uh, the to and to seek knowledge of itself. And the desire for that knowledge, as I just said, which requires that it imagine all that it might or might not be. See, it's imagining, it's trying to imagine itself, essentially. That's what evolution actually is. To perceive its imagination and to discern from in the, in the act of consciously perceiving all these se sequence of imagined things. To, to discern truth from falsity, and then hence to realize the truth that this infinite intelligence alone has emerged, has imagined all it ever believed it saw, and it alone truly exists. That's the theme of creation, according to Mayor Baba, and that is consistent with, I've tried to remain consistent to that idea because that's a logical and rational idea. It answers questions that not only haven't been answered, they haven't even been asked. Like, what are we doing here? What is the purpose of this? If this was created by God, why? For what end? To what end? You got to know these things. Those are called teleological questions. Why? Questions of why. These were sort of abandoned in materialism. We don't ask why. But every every person in their heart wants to know why am I here? Why? I, I'm born, I didn't volunteer to be born, I don't think I did, I don't know if I did, I don't remember it. And then I live this short, painful life, and then I die. Why? Why? So, that question burns in every real, genuine heart. So, Mayor Baba is the first person that I'm aware of that ever gave an answer to that question. Or even raised the question, truly. So, his book is called The Theme of Creation uh, and Its Purpose. God speaks the theme of creation and its purpose. So, if I was to to then say, you know, about is it perception or is it intelligence? Well, the ability we really by perception, since this perceiver is all that exists, we really mean by perception we really mean imagine, because there isn't anything to perceive except what it imagines it perceives, and it imagines those through these, these schemas, which I've laid out over and over. So, um, so the point is, there's only God, and God is infinite intelligence, infinite intelligence, and God wakes and begins to imagine um, seeking itself, because that's a part of the nature of intelligence, this nature of intelligence to wish to know whatever there is to know, but it, it itself is all there is to know, but it doesn't know this yet. Then it, it has all these schemas, and it perceives. And this is the what we call the evolution of that perception. Okay, These, these lenses. So, when, a, when one, in one book I talk about the evolution of perception, and then I say, oh, but really what there is is infinite intelligence, now you get it. It's not a contradiction, it's that perception is an intrinsic um, capacity of any intelligence. Or if an intelligence didn't have the capacity to imagine and perceive what it imagined, and to discern eventually, 
and to seek the truth and eventually discern truth from falsity, then all this actually makes sense. It all falls out of the meaning of the word intelligence. And why is this intelligence infinite? It's infinite because all these limiters, like time and space and all the natural laws, which limit things, and that's how the world is created, through limitation. It's not limited because it doesn't fall within the scope of these imagined limiters. So the, in, the intelligence is actually infinite, even if originally it was unconscious. Something could, you know, I go to sleep at night and I become fully unconscious in deep sleep. But I remain intelligent, I'm just not using that intelligence. So that's sort of like this too. The Baba says that in God Speaks. He uses the analogy of a fetus that, 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 that sort of has all these abilities and capacities that it's never used, but they're there. I mean, it can, it can see, it can hear, it can smell, but there's nothing. it's in this sort of cocoon, you know. And it hasn't activated those. So, and this process produces the consciousness that he eventually has so that he can make that final discernment of who he is, which, which is the, rea the reality. And this happens in each one of us individually, but it's really the same process sort of um, echoing again and again. Like if you drop a pebble in a pond, it, it kind of, it sends out, you know, waves, and then there's another one and another one. And now we're all God coming out of the original infinite intelligence state. Baba has a lot more to this. I don't go into it in my books, but he has um, God in ten states, but they're all consciousness states. This and so now you maybe can start to see how this is a psychic emergent universe. But in the end, through these schemas of, that include the 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 um, um, physical laws of, of physics, things have all the characteristics. All the things that we perceive, we perceive them as governed by the laws of nature. And that's what makes them what we call physical. So those qualities that we call physical are actually laws of perception. That, oh, that sounds strange. I once told my daughter when she was very young, I said, if, you, if somebody asks what, what is your dad's idea, just tell them it's the idea that the laws of nature are laws of perception. And they evolved. That's true. That's at least half of my system, because you also have individual um, evolution perception. Like my my personal experience has evolved even in my lifetime. And there's there's a kind of a, um, reincarnation that sort of overlays this too, that we don't do with all this individually in one life. It takes many many lives, and that includes our entire evolution. It begins in the gaseous forms and pre-gaseous, you know, and then gaseous and then rocks and mineral, um, minerals and plants and, and worms and birds and fish, fish and birds and, um, and mammals and finally human. And as a human being, you finally have full consciousness and you have the, the hardware to think and to try to purify yourself of all the uh, sort of stained you know, the stains that you gather through evolution because evolution is violent and um kind of horrific <laughs> it leaves you with a lot of bad uh instincts that we call the id you know it's freudian psychology now this idea could not have been uh, even thought of prior to about the time air bubble was writing because um and so it would be pointless to, for, let's say, uh, Muhammad to write like this, or Jesus, or, because many things didn't even, many of the processes I'm talking about weren't in our thinking. One of them is uh, process theories. We always thought that, you know, to, if, to explain disease, there has to be like some kind of a stuff, you know, like, or to explain anything, there has to be some kind of invisible stuff. We didn't think in terms of an evolution, a process, okay? So nobody really thought of this. They, they couldn't think. Then they also didn't have psychology. Um, that only came in the 20th century to also. Um, and when I'm talking about seeing this as this, that's actually from gestalt psychology, and that didn't exist in, prior to the 20th century. A lot of this came from German philosophy, by the way, um, in the 20th century. Um, but uh, mostly toward the end uh, of of uh, well, end of the 
no, I should say the end of the 18th century and the, throughout the 19th century. In the 20th century, we kind of went back to the idea of, of just materialism. And they're not, none of my colleagues are working on anything like this. You're not going to find this anywhere else. It's only here. Anyway, I, I will, I, there's a couple other points I want to cover, but I'll do that in, in um, part four. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was at least somewhat clear, uh, clarified um, that little problem and how I explained things in the past. Uh, I will see you in the next segment. Take care. Bye-bye.